ever made like one tiny decision and then it kind of snowballs? Oh, yeah. Like hitting snooze. Oh, tell me about it. One too many times. Yeah. And, and bam, your whole morning, you're just playing yeah. catch up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or how about grabbing a coffee on the way to work every day? Seems small. Right. But then you're like, wait, I spent how much this year on just that? It's crazy how those little things add up. Right. That's what we're diving into today. Those tiny choices that become something big. We're talking Atomic Habits, the book by James Clear. This book's been huge for people. And what's cool is Clear doesn't just talk theory. He lived it. Oh. Yeah, he had this bad injury in high school and used these tiny, like, 1% better each day improvements wow. to totally turn his life around. So it's not some overnight thing. It's small changes over time. Okay, I'm intrigued. So the big idea is systems over goals. Hmm. Right. Sounds catchy, but what's the difference, really? Think of two people, same goal, let's say, writing a best-selling book. Okay. The one who actually does it mm -hmm. isn't just wishing. They've got a system, a daily writing routine, whatever works for them. So it's not the goal itself. It's the how W you get there. Exactly. Clear compares it to compound interest. Small, consistent investments over time. Right. That's how you build wealth, not some get-rich-quick scheme. Same with habits. Makes sense. Like, we always overestimate what we can do in a day, but underestimate a year's worth of effort. Totally. It's the long game, the consistency. That's where the magic happens. Okay, so how do we actually do this? Make those good habits stick. So, Clear lays out these four laws of behavior change, a framework for, like, hacking your habits. I am here for some habit hacking. Lay it on me. Aslam, make it obvious. Uh, Our brains pick up on cues without us even realizing. Oh, like how I just know when someone's about to offer me cake, even if they haven't said a word. Uh-huh, maybe. But it's more like, there's this example in the book, a paramedic. Okay. She could spot if someone was having a heart attack just from tiny visual cues, you know? Stuff most people wouldn't notice. Wow. So if you want a good habit, make the trigger super obvious. Like, want to practice guitar more? Don't hide it away. Put it right where you see it constantly. Make it impossible to ignore. Exactly. Or they did this study where they rearranged food in a cafeteria. Healthier stuff up front. Right. People naturally chose it more. We're influenced by our environment more than we realize. It's about being smart with our surroundings then. Right. Setting ourselves up for success. 100%. Okay, ready for law two? Make it attractive. Bring on the attraction. Is this about willpower? Kinda. It's more about dopamine, that feel-good brain chemical. We chase rewards. Pleasure seekers. That's all we are. In a way, yeah. Clear talks about the food industry. Uh -oh. How they've nailed making food irresistible, right? They manipulate the bliss point. Oh, I've heard of that. That perfect combo of salt, sugar, fat that's like culinary crack. Exactly. So how do we use that for good habits, not just junk food? Yeah, because... Doing my taxes isn't exactly sending me on a dopamine rush. Right. So you got to get strategic. Claire calls it a motivation ritual. Pair something you love okay. with something you dread. Like, hate taxes, but love that new podcast. Only listen to it while doing taxes. So you start to crave the good habit because you're anticipating the reward. That's kind of sneaky, but I like it. It's all about rewiring those neural pathways. All right, law three, make it easy. This one's all about reducing friction. Friction, like when you know you should do something, but it takes so much effort just to start. Exactly. Those little bits of friction add up and totally sabotage our efforts. Clear talks about this Japanese manufacturing concept, lean production. Oh yeah, I've heard of that. It's about streamlining, eliminating unnecessary steps for maximum efficiency. And work smarter, not harder. Right. And it applies to habits, too. Say you want to start running in the morning. Don't make it this whole ordeal. Yeah, finding your shoes, the water bottle. Exactly. Lay everything out the night before. Make it so easy, you've got no excuse. It's those mental roadblocks that get... All right, bring on the final law. How do we make it satisfying? This has got to be good. This one's key. It's about the feeling after the habit's done. Clear tells this story, a public health thing in Pakistan. Okay. They were trying to get people to wash their hands more. Hand washing. I'm on the edge of my seat. Right. So just telling them wasn't enough. But then they brought in this new soap, lathered well, smelled amazing. Fancy soap. It made hand washing enjoyable and bam, people were hooked. So it wasn't logic. It was how it made them feel. Exactly. That's huge. When a habit's rewarding, even in a small way, we're more likely to stick with it. Like those apps with progress bars, little celebrations. Oh, I'm a sucker for a good progress bar. Right. It's tapping into that reward system. 
makes us feel good, keeps us going. So we've got the four laws. Obvious, attractive, easy, satisfying. What I love is this isn't just theory. It's actionable. 100%. And for those wanting to go deeper, Clear gets into even more practical stuff later in the book. One I loved was habit stacking. Habit stacking? Sounds intriguing. Tell me more. It's like this. We've already got tons of habits, things we do on autopilot. Oh, for sure. So instead of forcing a new W habit in, we attach it to an existing one. Piggybacking on what's already there. Exactly. You're using that existing neural pathway. Want to drink more water, but always forget. Wow, the struggle. Every time you make your morning coffee, also fill a glass of water. Coffee's the cue. So simple, yet so smart. Right. Leverage those routines. Now, another good one is the Goldilocks rule. Finding the sweet spot between bored and overwhelmed. Well, that's so key. Too easy, you quit. Too hard, you quit. Finding that balance is tough. It's different for everyone, but the takeaway is pay attention to how you feel as you build a habit. So be mindful, adjust as needed. Not about being perfect, just about making it sustainable. Now you're getting it. And speaking of progress, one of the most practical tools Clear offers is the one-page habit tracker. Ooh, a tracker. Is this like a fancy app or something? Nope. Super simple. Piece of paper, one per month. List your habits. Each day you do it, mark it down. Oh, I am all about that visual satisfaction of checking things off. It's motivating. And it ties back to systems over goals, right? The tracker isn't the goal. It's the system for consistency. What gets measured gets managed. Yeah. Can't argue with that. Okay, so we've got our four laws, habit stacking, Goldilocks rule, and a trusty habit tracker. I'm loving how practical this all is. It's not about some huge e-life overhaul. It's those Small tweaks that make all the difference. Exactly. It's those atomic habits. Seemingly insignificant, but over time. Massive change. Like that snowball effect, right? Yeah. Start small, gains momentum. And that's the beauty of it. You don't have to be perfect. Just show up consistently. One thing that I find particularly fascinating is how much our environment plays a role. You know? Our environment. Like, physically. How so? Our environment shapes our behavior constantly, whether we realize it or not. Think about it. Those strategically placed snacks at the grocery store checkout. Don't even get me started. My (laughs) willpower crumbles every time. The autoplay feature on Netflix that keeps you glued to the couch. Even the way our homes and workplaces are designed. It can either help or hurt our habits. It's like we're on autopilot, just responding to cues without even thinking. Precisely. But here's the empowering part. Once we understand how it influences us, we can design our environment to work for us, not against us. Declutter your home to minimize distractions, surround yourself with positive influences, curate your digital spaces. So it's about taking control, being intentional about our surroundings, both online and offline. Love that. Exactly. And it's incredibly empowering when you realize how much control you actually have. Small changes, strategically implemented, can have a ripple effect on your habits and ultimately your life. It's like you're not just letting life happen to you, you, you're shaping it. Right. Taking back that control. Now, before we wrap this up, I want to leave you with something to think about. If our environments are so powerful, like we've been saying, what does your current environment say about the person you're becoming? Ooh, that's a good one. Makes you really look around and be honest with yourself. Are you setting yourself up for the life you want just by how your space is? Exactly. It's about awareness, then action. Love it. So for anyone listening who's fired up to build those better habits one step at a time. Yeah. What's the big takeaway from Atomic Habits? Clear's message is super practical, small changes, but keep doing them. That's how you see big results. No magic bullet, just consistency. Exactly. It's those small 1% improvements each day that add up to huge change over time. So good. So no more trying to overhaul our entire lives overnight, right? Yeah. We're embracing the tiny tweaks. It's a journey. There'll be bumps along the way for sure. But approach it with curiosity. Be kind to yourself and never stop learning. So well said. As you go through your week... Think about one small habit, one change you can make. Those atomic habits, they're more powerful than we realize. And if you need a guidebook, atomic habits is it. 100%. It's worth the read for sure.